In this video, we're going to be discussing another special test used in the assessment of a lumbar radiculopathy, and that is the slump test. Now jumping down here all the way to the bottom, notice that the psychometrics of the slump test are very poor, a sensitivity of only 44% and a specificity of 58%. As a standalone test, you should never use the slump test to either rule down or rule up a lumbar radiculopathy because alone it has weak clinical value. That being said, you should probably use this test last in the assessment of a lumbar radiculopathy. Remember, if we go to the straight leg raise test, it has an excellent sensitivity, 92%. This test can be used to rule down a radiculopathy strongly. And then if we look at the cross straight leg raise test, it has a very good specificity. So this can strongly rule up a lumbar radiculopathy. The slump test can do none of those things alone. So if you suspect a lumbar radiculopathy, you should only use this at the end to really confirm your results. So never use this as a standalone test. In any case, to perform the slump test, the patient's going to be positioned in short sitting off the edge of the table, as you see right here. And then the PT is going to passively move the patient through the following progression of movements on their involved side. So in this case, the involved side would be the side with radicular symptoms. So let's suppose this patient has a suspected lumbar radiculopathy, and she complains of radicular symptoms going down her right lower extremity. Okay? So I'll take her through those movements. So first, I'm going to put her into ankle dorsiflexion. From there, we're going to move into knee extension. After that, I'll tell her to give a little bit of slumping at the thoracic spine. So she's going to round her shoulders forward, get a little bit more kyphosis at the T-spine, and then I'm going to passively put her into more cervical flexion. The cervical flexion, she can certainly actively do that, but if at the end of the act of cervical flexion she still does not have symptoms, I just want to confirm with a little bit of overpressure, so I'll usually just do that passively in any case. Notice that every one of these movements is putting tension on the nervous system. So in theory, if there's a lumbar radiculopathy, increasing that tension throughout the nervous system should exacerbate symptoms going down into that affected lower extremity, in this case the right side. So a positive slump test is going to be indicated by the reproduction of radicular symptoms into the affected lower extremity at any point in this progression. So in other words, you don't have to go through all four. You can always truncate the test early. For example, if I put her into ankle dorsiflexion, and then we go into passive knee extension. And at the top right here, if she experiences those radicular symptoms into that lower extremity right here, that's a positive test. There's no need to go through the thoracic slump and the cervical flexion. Okay? That would just be cruel. It'd be really mean. You don't want to do that. But if there's no symptoms there, then have her slump down. If there are symptoms at this point, again, stop. But if there's not symptoms after the slump, then you can certainly add the cervical flexion. Okay? Now from here, in a similar way to braggart sign that we talked about in a previous video, you can release some of that dorsiflexion. In other words, put them into a little bit of plantar flexion. Remember, plantar flexion actually puts slack on the nerve roots. And if you put slack on the nerve roots, then you should expect an easing of radicular symptoms into that lower extremity. Okay? You can also add back dorsiflexion and even try to get a little bit more. That should increase symptoms into that lower extremity because dorsiflexion tenses the nerve roots. And if somebody has a lumbar radiculopathy, putting tension on the nerve roots or putting slack on them should change the degree of radicular symptoms into the affected lower extremity. Okay. Now, when the test is complete, you're going to release the patient from the slump test by reversing the order of the progression that we did. So we're going to first release cervical flexion, then release the slump, then release knee extension, and then finally release ankle dorsiflexion last. Okay? Thank you for all your support. Be sure to check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff. 